Okay, so if you've got a linear combination of a cosine function and a sine function, it turns out that you can always write these as a single sine or cosine function. So here we've got this set up with a cosine function, and there's a kind of formula that we can follow here. R needs to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, and we need to choose this extra constant alpha so that tan of alpha is equal to minus b over a. And this is called the harmonic addition theorem. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at a nice proof of this theorem using complex numbers. So we start off with a cos theta plus b sine theta. What we'll do is first of all we'll just write these cos theta and sine theta in their complex exponential forms. So we get a e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta all over 2 for our cos theta term and then plus b e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta and then all divided by 2i. Okay, so what we'll do next is we're going to group together our e to the i theta terms and our e to the minus i theta terms. So here, the coefficient of e to the i theta, we get an a over 2, and then we've also got plus b over 2i as our new coefficient when we group together our e to the i theta terms. Then for our e to the minus i theta, we get plus a over 2 again, but now it's minus b over 2i, then multiplied by e to the minus i theta. Okay, so what we'll do next is we'll just deal with these i's in the denominator. We don't want those, so we'll have a over 2, and now it's minus bi over 2, because the two i's you multiply together give you a negative, still multiplied by e to the i theta, and then plus a over 2 stays as it is, and now it's plus bi over 2, multiplied by e to the minus i theta. So what we'll do next is we'll have a look at these coefficients. These are now some complex numbers expressed in terms of a and b. What we'll do is we'll convert these to polar form, and then we'll see where that takes us. So to convert these two complex numbers into polar form, we need to find their modulus and their arguments. The modulus is nice because it's actually the same for each of these. The modulus of a over 2 plus or minus bi over 2. With a little bit of work with Pythagoras' theorem here, you can show that this is equal to a half times the square root of a squared plus b squared. We'll call this equal to r over 2. So it'll make sense in a moment why we choose to keep this factor of a half there. So that's the modulus done. So what about the argument of each of these? Let's start with the first one. So the argument of a over 2 minus bi over 2. So if you imagine just for now that a and b are both positive, then the picture would kind of look like this, that you, you go a over 2 along in your complex plane, and then you go b over 2 down. And this would be our angle here. So the actual angle here would be arctan of b over 2 over a over 2. So it would be arctan of b over a. But then we want to take the negative of that to be our argument, because by convention, when the imaginary part of our number is negative, we're going to have a negative angle. So the argument of a over 2 minus bi over 2, I'm going to write this as arctan of minus b over a, which is equivalent to minus arctan of b over a. And let's define this to be our angle alpha now. Okay, so what about the argument for this complex number? Well, you can use a similar sort of argument Again, perhaps split up into cases depending on if a and b are positive and negative. But ultimately you get that this is equal to arctan, now just a b over a without any negative sign here. So using the symmetry of the arctan function, arctan of minus b over a is alpha, so arctan of b over a without the minus sign is minus alpha. Okay, so now let's substitute these in. So if we convert both of these into polar form, we know that a cos theta plus b sine theta we know that this is now going to be equal to r over 2 multiplied by e to the i alpha multiplied by e to the i theta, so that's just our e to the i theta term there, and plus r over 2 e to the minus i alpha multiplied by e to the minus i theta there. Okay, so now if we will take out this factor of r, so now this is equal to r multiplied by, and then we'll take the half here, if we collect together our exponential terms, we'll get e to the i times theta plus alpha, and then plus e to the i with a minus sign, theta plus alpha. And this is really interesting now, because don't forget, this is actually the complex form of cosine of theta plus alpha, with the factor of a half there. So that's why we chose to take that out. Then we get r cosine of theta plus alpha, which is what we were trying to show there. 